I've made three promises to every audience to whom I've spoken of them. The first promise is that I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm going to tell you the truth. And let me start by giving you two numbers. 44,056. In the decade just passed, 44,000 people moved to Maine. We gained 44,000 in population. It's not great, but it's better than losing population, which is what's happening now. Over the course of that same decade, in the entire state of Maine, we created 56 new jobs. 56 new jobs in an entire decade. Let me give you some more truth. The state of Maine is in debt up to its ears. Our unfunded liabilities are measured in the billions. There's three and a half billion dollars of bridges and roads that need to be fixed. They're crumbling around us. Our farmers, our fishermen, our foresters, can't get loans. Our economy is basically at a standstill. What? We can do a lot of chest thumping about taxes and spending. Generally speaking, Republicans will thump their chest about taxes. Democrats will shut uh, thump their chest about spending. The problem we have in Maine, ladies and gentlemen, is that our cost of living and doing business in this state is too high. That's it. We have what a businessman would call a top line problem. Our economic activity is insufficient to support even what Paul and I agree we want to do and need to do in this state. And we have to fix it. <coughs> so the second promise I make to people is that I'm going to give you a strategy. I'm going to lay out a strategy that I think can fix that problem that can cut down that wall of costs, that cost structure, that basically stands as a sentinel around the periphery of our state and says to people, stay out. We don't want you here. And they don't come. The three things we have to do, we have to cut the cost of electricity. We have to cut the cost of health insurance and health care today. And we have to cut the cost of delivering public services. Cutting the cost of government. These are costs. And they're costs that discourage investment. We can cut the cost of electricity with a public power authority in the state that can make electricity cheaper particularly for business and industrial consumers. The most successful new factory in the state of Maine in the last 10 years is a tomato factory in Madison. It produces 120,000 pounds of tomatoes a day. They own the vine ripe and tomato market between Montreal and New York. It's as successful as the as the uh, <coughs> That tomato factory is in Madison because Madison has a municipal utility that could supply them with cheap electricity. That's why they're there. Healthcare, 60%, 60 percent of what we spend in the state of Maine in healthcare is to take care of chronic preventable disease. The incentives are all wrong in this system. We're incentivizing the wrong things. We're incentivizing procedures and payments for procedures. Fundamentally, we're incentivizing outputs. 
We've got it wrong in energy. We've got it wrong in education. We've got it wrong in health care. Because in every one of those sectors, critical sectors in our economy, the incentives are running in the wrong direction and we're incentivizing outputs <coughs> instead of cost-effective performance and the production of what we need, whether it's goods or services. In energy, all we want is BTUs. Education, we're producing and have in Maine now more teachers per pupil than any other state in America. In healthcare, we're incentivized <coughs> to produce procedures instead of quality outcomes. We need to change that. And we have the ability to change it in Maine in our healthcare system for some remarkable reasons having to do with the not-for-profit hospitals like Franklin all across the state and the fact that they now employ 78% of all primary care physicians in the state directly. We can have an accountable care organization statewide that is just as successful as those that companies like Chimbro, Huzzy C, Jackson Labs, and others have, and that are remarkably successful. The third thing we need to do is we need to cut the cost of government services. We have built a wall of cost that has priced us out of prosperity. <coughs> and behind that wall of cost, behind that wall of cost, which includes a state government that is not nearly as efficient as our local municipal governments have made, behind that is a wall of no. So that every time someone wants to do something in the state of Maine, it arguably makes sense. It takes them too long to get to either yes or no. And too often, they get to no instead of yes. We've got to fix that. We have become a state that is basically hostile to investment. And if you think for one minute that we can have jobs and incomes and opportunities in Maine without investment from inside Maine and outside Maine, if you think for one minute that a governor can be the job creator in chief, you're wrong. Believe me, you're wrong. Governors, mayors, can't create jobs. Governors and mayors, as Paul pointed out, and as Paul has done in Waterville, can change conditions in which people and businesses can thrive and prosper, and that's what we need to do in Maine. 